this place behold love's amazing grace all are welcome all are welcome bring your hopes bring your dreams mercy flows and love redeems all are In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. A blessed day to all of you. My dear sisters and brothers, the readings of the day, the first, the second, together with the gospel reading, give us a peek into the upside down kingdom that Jesus came to teach us. He invites us to die with him so that we could rise with him. You and I need to learn the art and spirituality of emptying ourselves so that God could fill us with himself. So let's pause for a while and acknowledge our need for God and lean on to the Lord, for he is kind and compassionate, slow to anger, rich in graciousness, and ready to relent, and he forgives. Lord Jesus, you are the way, Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterwards, Whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp so that when he comes to stay with us, he can be there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Alicia asked, can something be done for her? His servant Gehazi answered, yes, 
she has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Alicia said, call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Alicia promised, this time next year, you will be fondling, fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent to me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, after proclaiming the gospel of the day, I said, the gospel, the good news of the Lord. And I'm sure all of you responded, praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder for how many of you this is good news. Whoever loves his life loses it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And Jesus is more graphic. Whoever loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Is that good news? Whoever loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. My dear sisters and brothers, as I was listening to the three readings of the day, I glean that they all speak about the radical calling to which all of us have been made and created. God wants us to choose him, leaving behind everything and everyone. And he wants us to leave behind not just things, our profession, our dreams and ambitions, our family, but he would want us to lose even our life. Now, does it get more radical than that? And that is why we refer to the kingdom of God as an upside down kingdom, where you find that the values of the kingdom are so very topsy-turvy. It is only in the kingdom of God that we speak of high is low and low is high. Being first is being the last and being a servant is being at the position of leadership. It is only in the kingdom of God can we truly say luxurious poverty or looking at the cross we can say successful failure. 
It is only in God's kingdom can we come across lovable enemies, inside outsiders. God's kingdom so very topsy-turvy. It is so very upside down. And that is what you find in the gospel of the day, where Jesus tells us to empty ourselves so that we could be filled with God and filled by God. If an earthen vessel or a glass, as we understand, is full, how could it be filled again? We need to empty ourselves. We need to let go of everything so that we could let God fill us with himself. Notice how Elisha goes into the house of that couple. They are elderly and they are childless. And because they receive the prophet, he blesses them and they are blessed with a child. And if you actually page through the book of the Kings, a couple of chapters later, you will see that that son, 20 years later, would die. And Elisha would travel a distance of 20 miles and raise up that son for that mother and her husband. Notice how God gives, and he gives life twice where there is no hope of life at all. Or for that matter, if you go through the book of Genesis, you will find the promise of God, paradoxical as it is. I'm putting words into the mouth of God here. If you are an old woman living with an old man, you will be blessed with the child. Well, that's the story of Abraham and Sarah. That is the story of Anna. That is the story of the mother of Samuel and Samson too. And that is the story we find with which the New Testament would open, Zechariah and Elizabeth. And that is the story that we celebrate as a culmination in the birth of Jesus. Behold, a virgin will conceive and bear a son. How do you bring those two words together? Virgin and mother. Paradoxical, right? And then you talk in terms of the Lamb of God, the Good Shepherd. And how do you bring them together? And as though that were not enough, you have God and man. Sisters and brothers, God's kingdom is an upside-down kingdom when you look at it through our eyes. God's kingdom is topsy-turvy, and it is a kingdom where we can make sense only by dying. To conclude, the first, second reading of the day tells us that when we are baptized with Christ, we die to the world and are buried with Christ. And now how good news is that? But Paul doesn't stop with that. And he goes on to say, and if you are buried with Christ, then you will also rise with Christ. And that is what we hear in the gospel of the day. Seeds that lie buried in the dark crack open the moment they surrender themselves to a process that they don't understand. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I just can't comprehend the way of God. And God says, well, that's how it needs to be for me, and that's how it needs to be for you. And so, sisters and brothers, let's let go and let God in. Let's surrender ourselves, and then we'll find ourselves as God finds us. Let's empty ourselves, and then God can fill us with the gift of himself. This is the only way God's kingdom functions, and this is the only way we can get ahead in the kingdom of God. When you get behind the line, that's when you are ahead of everyone. When you sit at the foot of the table, that's when you find yourself at the head of the table. 
It's only when you die that you truly live in the kingdom. That's the only way. That is the way of the cross. That is the way of Jesus. And so, let's pray that we may be blessed with the art and the spirituality of letting go and letting God in. We are about to profess our faith in the one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We turn our attention to the members of the RCIA for whom we are grateful and we give thanks. And as we dismiss them, we pray that they may listen to the word of God, ponder over it, and allow that word to take flesh in their hearts. And so let's whisper a prayer for the RCIA candidates and catechumens, and also for the members of our team. Please rise for the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of our body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now with childlike confidence, we place our prayers and petitions before the Lord. Let your response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. <clears throat> For the church, that we who have died with Christ in baptism may recognize our dignity in being children of God and sisters and brothers to one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For our government leaders, that God will guide the legislators and policymakers in developing new structures and procedures for police and law enforcement officials to fulfill their responsibilities more effectively. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community of St. John Vianney, that we may welcome all who enter our lives as we would welcome Christ with great love and generously share our time and talents with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all youth, that God will guide them through the challenges and confusion of these days and help them grow to their fullest potential. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to live the gospel, that we may love God with our whole heart and strength, and learn to love everyone in our lives as God loves them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For a reordering of our pursuits, that God will free us from ego-driven struggles for power, fame, social status, and possessions, and help us find fulfillment in loving service and life-giving relationships. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For all those of our parish community who are ill, we pray especially for Ramon Yanado, Matthew Bennett, Mike Pollard, Agnes Rowan Scholl, Martin Guivino, Richard De La Fuente, Chris Teeb, he just went through a surgery today, 
Leslie Schreiner, sister of Monsignor Mullen, Pat George, Andy Mirabito, and all the deceased members of our families here in our parish community, that the risen Lord will welcome them and share with them his eternal life. We pray especially for Carmen Sita Yubud, aunt of Doris Rivera, and Chuck Scanlon, whom we laid to rest yesterday. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. And we pray for the repose of the soul of Celsayam Santiago, for the special intentions of Lucia and Sofia Alvarez, eternal rest for Mike Clayton, and for the special intentions and her physical well being of Anne Flagg. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, a word of thanks to those that are generous with God's work. And from the bulletin you may have learned that uh, we do need to contribute whatever it takes to build up the kingdom. And so for those who are still to make their contributions and donations for the furthering of God's kingdom, may this serve as a reminder and an invitation. Let's build up. God's kingdom together for what we give to the Lord will come back manifold. May God be with you and may he bless you. Let's rise and pray, dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Father, the effects of your mysteries bless us with your presence and your grace. We pray that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you, your holy people, Christ stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Celsa San Diego, Mike Clayton, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Have mercy on us all, we pray, especially on Lucia and Sophia Alvarez, who pray for your blessings, and Anne Flagg, who asks for good health, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, our beloved spouse, with St. John Vianney, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may come to be co best of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As we pray the Lord's Prayer, I would invite you to pray for our parish community that as we re-enter into the church for in-person communal worship, this uh, entry may be blessed by the Lord, that our parishioners will remain safe and healthy. And so together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the, the power, power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. It's communion time, and because of 
physical distancing and the shelter in place order you are unable to participate in it physically and so i invite you to enter into spiritual communion as we conclude the eucharist let's pause for a while and lean on to the lord for he is able to bring life even when there is no hope of life he brings healing where people are hurting and so let's pray that people everywhere and in particular in our parish and in our neighborhood may remain healthy that this pandemic situation will soon pass that we will slowly emerge from our homes and resume our normal life to the best of our ability and in the process we also pray for patience for persistence and for prayerfulness that people will remain hopeful that in all things we will lean on to the lord and so we pray May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life O Lord we pray so that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord Amen, Amen. As we conclude the Eucharist I'd like to inform you 
and together with you salute uh, Chuck Scanlon, whom we laid to rest yesterday or a couple of days ago. He was a good man, very active and engaged in our parish. He was a lector, an usher, a greeter. He was in men's club, the Knights of Columbus. He was also part of liturgy council. And uh, as though that were not enough, he was also busy with Catholic charities. He was a good man who lived his life to the best of his ability. And we are grateful that he was one of us. And as we pray for him, we also pray to him. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go learn to lean on to the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. I will choose Christ. I will choose love. I choose to serve. I give my heart. I give my life. I give my all to you. Times must he call my name and show to me that he is God. And as a servant, he calls to me. You must serve too. I will choose Christ. I will choose love. I choose to serve. I give my heart, I give my life, I give my all to you. As I look upon your cross, so too must I die with you. And with the death of my own desires, I'll rise with you. Say 